Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Okay, so today we are going to talk about belt grinders. Um, and most specifically, the single speed, or the single medium speed belt grinder. Um, and some advantages of those that you might not have thought about. So, what kind of got this started is uh, a friend of mine, he's, you know, starting to make knives. And he's come over to the shop a couple of times, and he's made some knives, and, and some of them are coming out pretty dang nice. <clears throat> well, he's at the stage now where he's thinking about building a grinder. Um, probably because he sees my grinders, and, uh, well, most of my grinders are all, I mean, I'm, I built the things. Well, we'll, we'll take a look at them. So this one right here is probably my my first grinder that I I mean my first good grinder that I built. Uh, it's on a different motor, but uh, it's a single speed 1,725 RPM motor, um, one horse, and it's driving a, a oh about an eight or a nine inch uh, aluminum wheel that is smooth. There's no rubber on it. That's the drive wheel. Um, got a simple tracking mechanism, a flat platen, and um, a, you know, and a frame and a, a base to hold it all together. Right? The same base shares my uh, my first variable speed grinder. This one right here is a fixed speed motor, but we're using step pulleys to you know change the speed. So it's a variable speed, but a fixed uh, speed motor. Um, Let's see, back here, that one is uh, a grinder that I built out of uh, aluminum pop cans. I melted them down and cast the wheels. Uh, well, I threw other aluminum in there also. I just threw some cans in there. Well, that way I could say I, you know, made about aluminum cans. And a treadmill motor is the, and controller is the, the power source. So this one is infinitely variable as well as reversible because I put a reversing switch on the thing. And it's a really handy grinder. This is the last one that I built, <coughs> well, the last belt grinder that I built. This one has got a three-phase, one or one and a half horse, one horse motor. Um, but uh, uh, Three-phase motor with a VFD uh, controller. Uh, variable frequency drive is what that stands for. Um, and this is infinitely variable also, and it is also reversing too. Um, I'll run the same controller to run my little disc grinder, but uh, we're talking about belt grinders. Too. So anyway, so my buddy, he's like, so he, uh, he gets on the internet and he starts researching, you know, building grinders. And of course, he runs across the, uh, the crowd on all the knife forums saying that, you know you have to have a variable speed grinder you have to have two horsepower you know minimum you have to have all this kind of stuff I have seen some pretty talented individuals make knives with a freaking disc or a, a you know a hard wheel uh, angle grinder and sandpaper and files okay so you don't have to have anything that you don't want to 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 buy to begin with to make knives and some of the guys that I've seen make some pretty dang nice knives with very little and as far as machinery and equipment and stuff <clears throat> so do not think that, I mean, I've ground thousands of knives on these grinders, okay? There ain't nothing wrong with them, you know? I mean, those that belt, that grinding belt right there is not smart enough to know whether it was ground with a pile of junk or the latest and greatest three or five thousand dollar variable speed, three horsepower, tilting, blah, 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 grinder, okay? Um, now... There are, I mean, variable speed grinders are nice, okay? I have one, two, three of them, okay? I, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, they are nice. But the fixed speed, the fixed medium speed grinder is probably the best way to start, okay? Now, now when I say medium speed, this is a 1,725 RPM motor driving, you know, an 8 to a 10 inch drive wheel, okay? That's going to give me a, a belt surface feet per minute of about 3,600 or so, somewhere around in that nature. 
That's the number of linear feet that that belt goes past a certain point, like the, the, the work rest, in a minute, okay? <coughs> that 3,600 <coughs> RPM, or surface feet per minute range, is a pretty nice happy medium. I mean, you can do an awful lot of work on that pretty fast, um, and yet it's still slow enough that you can control it very well. Believe me, if that grinder was not handy, it would not be there. You know, I mean, I do this for, you know, a good portion of my living. If that single speed grinder was not useful, I would turn it into a variable speed grinder. I mean, I've already showed you how I've turned these other grinders in, right? Now, when you are first starting out grinding, you're going to think that you can just step right up to this grinder with a chunk of steel in your hands and turn it into a knife, all right? More than likely, you're going to screw up the first 10, okay? Because these grinders, they are very, very efficient, but they also remove material very quickly. And sometimes in places you don't want to. I mean, heck, after several thousand knives, sometimes I will, with these two hands, stick a knife into a belt and remove material where I didn't want to. It's just the name of the game. That grinder doesn't care. Okay. Now, when you're learning to grind, the speed of that grinder it's very good if that speed does not change okay and I'll tell you why it's because when you're learning how to uh, to grind there's so many things going on all at the same time that it's very helpful to have some things that don't change <clears throat> a single speed grinder it will sound the same all the time the vibrations that you get through the, uh, you know, through the platen, through your hands, through your feet, you know, standing on the, um, the ground where, you know, the grinder, the vibrations will come up through your feet. The vibrations coming through the air, all of that kind of stuff will stay the same. It'll stay constant. Okay. So if something is not right, you will know about it. Okay. If, you know, one of your mounting bolts starts loosening up, that'll change that vibration that you see, feel, and hear. All right? And it'll let you know that something's going bad, before, hopefully before anything really bad happens. Grinding belts. <coughs> Grinding belts are very individualistic, okay? I like the Norton Blaze 36 grit belts and the 60 grit belts um, and the 120s. Uh, that line of belts, they have doubled in price since I started buying the things and those belts are what my hands are used to. Um, they cut uh, with less pressure than the other belts that I've tried. Um, I've tried some other belts, some more expensive, some less expensive, and they, I, I just don't get along with them as well as I do those Nortons. You figure stuff out like that when your grinding speed stays the same, okay? If you're constantly messing with that grinding speed, then you're constantly having to, um, you know, vary the pressure more more so than if you had a fixed speed grinder. You get a fixed speed grinder, the world's your oyster, right? That grinder runs the same speed all the time, okay? So you put, you know, try three different belts. Put them on there, grinding hardened steel and soft steel, both of them, and you will quickly learn which belt you like the best for grinding hardening, hardened steel or grinding soft steel or for grinding brass. <coughs> you throw a variable speed in there and now it's just something else to try to learn while you're trying to learn pressure, heat, angles, body stance, all of that kind of stuff, okay? So that single speed is really, really handy when you're starting to learn. Um, and that's something that I think that gets it just doesn't get talked about. I mean it's, I mean, there's a reason people don't learn how to drive with sports cars, okay? You take the family, you know, Chevy Lumina or Malibu or Ford Taurus or something like that. You take that out and you learn how to drive with it, right? Once you learn how to make the rest of the car follow the front bumper and not run into anything 
and kind of keep the car in the lane where it's supposed to be and then you know observe all your traffic signals and speed limits and all that kind of stuff and then once you drive that Ford Taurus for you know a couple of years and you haven't wrecked it and you're still alive hopefully and the car is still in one piece hopefully well then you go out and you get a sports car you know something that goes really fast and then and then you have fun with it but you try to drive that sports car right off the bat and you're going to run into trouble so anyway so <clears throat> Um, single speed grinders are also uh, a lot simpler to build okay so this one like you see it's got a motor it's got a drive wheel it's got a tracking system it's got a, a, a platen a frame and a base okay you don't have to and the, I mean the the wiring is a simple on off switch okay I mean this is about as simple of a machine as you can get which means it's a whole lot easier to build. Not only is it easier for you to build the thing out of scrap if that's what you're after, it's also more inexpensive to purchase outright. When you first start off making knives, you know, more than likely money's going to be tight. And if you think it's not going to be tight, wait a couple of months and you'll figure out how tight it's going to be. I mean, when you're starting to talk about firing up a whole new shop and you're talking about getting grinders plus belts for the grinders, plus buffing machines, plus a, a forge, an anvil, a heat treating oven, drill press, bandsaw, I mean, you just keep, it, it adds up really, really fast. So if you can get into, you know, building yourself a nice machine for a hundred, two hundred bucks, or buying one for under a thousand, um, you know, inexpensive is good right off the bat. Then, you know, once you made a couple hundred knives and you're starting to sell the things and you're starting to make some money at it, then let that money help you purchase either materials and parts to build a variable speed or, you know, uh, help let that money help you buy your dream, uh, you know, high dollar variable speed, high horse grinder, you know, and, and set up if that's what you're after. <coughs> so again... <coughs> The single medium speed belt grinder has got a lot going for it that I think uh, gets not mentioned in a lot of the forums and a lot of the places where people are start, you know, uh, going for information on learning how to make knives and stuff. Um, and don't ever forget, there are some really talented guys out there that can make really good knives with an angle grinder and a pile of sandpaper, and you might be one of them. Now, if those guys can do that with an angle grinder and a pile of sandpaper, what can they do with a basic single speed grinder? All right, uh, I guess that's enough for now. Okay, so again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.